Day number four of the profit challenge, and I hope that you're getting a lot of good value out of these sessions so far. Um, I know I have been getting a little good experience just kind of doing these recordings for you every day. And uh, I think I finally found my groove. I think I finally figured out uh, this recording thing with Zoom. I got my home studio set up and I got this whole webinar thing going. So really appreciate you making the time to, uh, to be here this morning. Uh, again, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of weekend coming up. Coming up. And so what we're going to try to do is record tomorrow's session and the one on Sunday, just so that uh, you don't have to show up tomorrow and honor the thanks the, uh, the thankful time that we have of Easter. So to, today we're going to talk about average order value. And uh, average order value is one of those things that's probably the most critical component to understanding how do you grow more margin out of your product margin tree. And the product margin tree is something we talked about yesterday. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dive in to see uh, the average order value and figure out, and just remember how we calculate the average order value. But then as well from there, what we'll talk a bit about is how we also then can use average order value to influence more sales or more margin out of our business. So let's dive into it. So just to recap really quick, the product margin tree that we looked at yesterday so if you take an e-commerce business, let's say, for example, that starts off with a million dollars at the top line, you've got a million dollars sales revenue. And then from there, how that breaks down is, let's say you generated 4,000 orders to get that million dollars in revenue. That would equal a $250 average order value. So again, taking a million divided by 4,000 gives you $250 in an average order value. But in order to get an order, you need to have so many units sold on that order. And so let's take, for example, and every one of those 4,000 orders, you had two to two and a half units per order. So if you go 4,000 times 2.5, that's gonna give you 10,000 units sold. And then from there, if you take that average order value, each of those individual units at 2.5, divide the 250 over 2.5, gives you $100 in average unit revenue. Then from there, you've got your product revenue that bakes out into two different parts. You've got the product revenue, is the same as kind of roughly what we talked about on the sister tree, the order margin tree that we're gonna look into a little bit more. But think of your product revenue again as how much price or how much you've sold something for at the individual unit level. And then you have your cost of goods sold is what you actually would have purchased it or bought it for. And so the difference between those two gives you your product margin. That you take product margin times your unit sold, 10,000 units sold times $75 profit margin gives you a total product margin of 750,000. So that's just a quick recap of the product margin tree. So today what we're gonna do, as I said, is we're gonna dig in a little bit further into average order value. And so again, average order value, just to recap how the math works is sales revenue over your orders. And so when we looked at the previous example, again, you look at your sales revenue of a million bucks divided by 4,000 gives you average order value of 250. And so, how can we perhaps use that value to help us understand the math a little bit better? Well, if we took average order value, and let's just hold it constant for a second in this scenario, but let's say you were actually able to increase your orders. I mean, is obviously most people want to drive more sales, more revenue, more business out of their, out of their whatever it is, whether it's direct to consumer or whether you're an affiliate or influencer, everyone always could use more sales, right? And so in order to get more sales out of the equation, let's say we added 10% more orders to this formula. And so take 4,000 and let's add 10% 10, 10 to that or make it 4,400 instead. So what you're gonna net out is basically an average order value holding that constant at 250, add 10% to the orders at 4,400, you're gonna get 10% back up to your top line of $1.1 million now. And so you're gonna grow your profit margin, your product margin there by $100,000 by simply adding 10% more orders to your, to your input coming in on the velocity. Similarly, if we take your average order value, let's say for example, and let's say we increase your average order value by 10%. So if we take that $250, and let's say we increase that by 10%, what that's gonna now do for you is do the same math or the same equation that we just looked at where it's gonna go up 10% for you. So $275 now in your average order value, and that'll give you that same 10% on your top line of 1.1 million or basically another 100,000. So now conventional math or conventional vision would say, well, what if we just took 10% on both of those equations? What would that, what's that gonna yield for us? So if we increase average order value and our orders both by 10%, so take the 250, add 10% to that to get 275. 
take the 4,400, add 10%, you get 4,400. It's actually a compounding factor where you get actually a 21% lift in your overall sales revenue. So as you can see from this math example, um, the math's pretty simple, but what's it, with the power of it is the compounding factor where is if you increase not just your top line sales of 4,000 orders, but then you also increase your average order value at 275 here, or then another 10%, you're gonna get that compounding factor of your overall sales revenue at the top line. And so what a lot of e-commerce retailers and a lot of e-commerce merchants focus on is just getting more sales, more sales, more sales, more sales, more sales in the door. And that's great, that's okay, but what they're missing the boat on is, well, what about more average order value? How do I get more people to add more things to their basket? Or perhaps maybe I look at, need to look at my pricing and perhaps increase that a little bit further. So those are kind of some you know, different ways to just showcase how the math works. But the, some of the factors that you could increase that average order value is we go back to our product margin tree. There's really two key things that you can influence. You can influence your pricing now, in this stage of life where we're at with this pandemic crisis, increasing pricing may not be perceived as a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the type of business that you're in. Um, obviously, there's a lot of price gouging perhaps going on out there in the world right now. And so you want to be sensitive to your customers. I wouldn't recommend raising your prices unless you absolutely need to at this point in time. Um, but if it is something that you, know, you feel there's a need to, then by all means, increasing your average unit revenue or average price per unit is ultimately gonna drive you to a higher average order value because it just translates up. The balance though you have to remember is if you increase your average unit revenue, you could introduce some friction for people. If you, you know, even a small five to 10% price increase could introduce some friction for people that maybe they don't wanna buy from you anymore. So, you know, you have to really make sure you have a really good premium product or a really good story to tell so that if you're gonna to try to raise your prices, that people are actually going to buy, still buy at that same rate or that same velocity, or you're still going to get that same 4,000 orders. Because what you could find is you could raise, let's say, $100 in unit revenue to, let's say, 110 or even 105. You may say the orders on the other side of the equation go down. So it's always a bit of a balancing act and a bit of a pendulum that you have to be balancing. The one easier way, though, to increase your average order value would go back to the product margin tree and look at your unit sold. So if you think about it, we had 4,000 orders and we had 10,000 units sold. And so that equated to basically a units per order of 2.5. Now let's say, for example, you increase that units per order by even just a, to, to a 2.6 or to a 2.7, or even all the way up to a three, let's say. If you can do something like that without having to touch your prices over here, that's gonna drive more impact, not just to your average order value, because let's say, for example, you did 2.6 up to 250, in your average order value, right? That's gonna give you an average order value of 260 now. Or if you went to three, you're gonna get an average order value up to $300. And so those little things can actually add up to be a lot more difference, as well as you're gonna get more units sold on the other side of the equation, which is gonna drive more margin at the bottom line. And so I encourage you to think about, and we're gonna get into this a little bit more tomorrow, is about thinking about your units per order is perhaps something, you know, is there more product that I could be selling to people? Not necessarily, more at a higher price, but is there other little things that I can add into the checkout? You know, a lot of times you see those, what we call an, a cart booster or margin booster. You've probably all seen them at the checkout aisle where you walk into the store and as you're about to check out of the grocery store, there's the Coke cooler, or there's the chocolate bars, or there's the gum, or there's the whatever, right? And I'm sure we're all been guilty of buying one of those little th extra things, right? Well, they just had to do next to nothing to just have it sitting there ready for you to go and they just added more units to your basket or your units per order. And so just keep that in mind as we go into tomorrow's session because we're going to get into the units per order is something else that perhaps you can consider when you're trying to increase your average order value. So without that, without further ado, that's going to be our lesson for tomorrow. Units per order is where we're going to focus our attention tomorrow. I'm going to show you the math in terms of how that's going to influence your average order value, how it's going to influence your units sold, as well as your overall product margin. And so again, you know, in a quick nutshell, remember that today we talked about average order value. We're trying to keep these lessons very short, sweet, to the point, and hopefully you found some value out of them today. So tomorrow, when we talk about units per order, we'll get into a little bit further how you can further increase top line, but also increase the bottom line. So without, I thank you again for being here today. Again, I ask you to be present, connect with others, and if you can, try to make an impact in someone's life today. 
Thanks for watching today. I'm going to pause the recording now and I'll take any questions from anyone.